Hello, now that we have the basics of programming down, in this video I want to deep dive into how the computer memory works and how programs are actually executed. This is important because it will help you understand a lot of the fundamentals as we learn more advanced topics. So on your computer you usually have three pieces that work together and again it has been designed just like the human brain so you have the cpu uh, which stands for central processing unit and you can think of the cpu as basically executing all the different tasks so it's you can think of it as the main brain of a computer you have the ram uh, which is like your short-term memory or your active memory in the brain um, and it kind of keeps tracks of what you need to do um, and the CPU takes stuff from the RAM and then executes them. Okay, so these two are talking to each other all the time. And whenever you're buying a computer, you might, you know, read like it has, you know, 12, 16 gigabits of RAM uh, or 8 gigabytes of RAM. So that's really what that means. And then you have your hard drive, which has all the different programs that you have. You may you know, not use of them most of the time, uh, and you use most of, you know, some of them more often. So these two, the hard drive and the RAM, talk with each other. Now let's talk about the flow of how that happens. So let's say you have Microsoft PowerPoint. We have PowerPoint here. And let's also say we have World of Warcraft here. I'm going to write it in WOW. And now we turn on our computer and we double click on the PowerPoint application. So what ends up happening is the computer comes into the hard drive and looks for PowerPoint. Just like if we want to think of a memory or something, we need to think in our, in our head and, and try to find it and remember it. So the computer looks in the hard drive, it sees that it has PowerPoint, and what it does at that point is it moves PowerPoint into the RAM. So PowerPoint comes in here. You know, and that it's a it's a program, right? So it has a bunch of code that makes PowerPoint work. So now you have PowerPoint open. Uh, the CPU sees you have PowerPoint in the RAM, so it takes it and it opens it. Now what happens is you also have a PowerPoint, a PPT file on your hard drive. So you, when you're inside PowerPoint, you say, you know, file open, you click on that PowerPoint file. So that PowerPoint file is also now moved into the RAM. So this is data, right? This is basically that the data that you have for that PowerPoint, and this is the actual program that is open. So again, the CPU sees the program and the data, and it loads both of them, and you see it on your screen. As you can see, the World of Warcraft application is not in the RAM because it's not open, so um, it's just on the hard drive, and there's no need to bring it on the RAM. So as you can see, the RAM is pretty important. Um, that's why sometimes you may notice that your the computer gets slow when you have too many different applications open is because the RAM has usually much more limited space. Uh, usually, like if you have pretty good RAM, you usually have 16 gigabytes. But, you know, if you have a lower end computer, you may have 8 gigabytes of RAM. And if you have open too many applications, the RAM is going to be full and it's going to get slower and slower. Uh, whereas the hard drive, since the CPU is not talking directly with it, uh, that's why it has much more space and you can put much more applications on it. But as soon as you open it, it comes into the RAM and the CPU comes and takes the application and shows it to you. I hope that gives you a general idea of how memory works in computers. And now we're going to dive and how programs that we actually write come into the RAM and then get executed by the CPU. Okay, so now let's talk about what actually happens when we write some code and how it interacts with the RAM or the main memory that we showcased right before and how the CPU interacts with it. So the, we, can, we can divide the main memory into three different sections. So the, the one at the bottom we're gonna name, this is where the actual program is held, like we talked before when you open the you know, PowerPoint or anything else, or in our case, when we write some code, um, this is where the code will reside uh, when it's compiled by the computer. Then we have the second section, which is called the stack. 
and we're going to talk about why it's called stack in a second and then we have the last section which we're going to call the heap so what happens when we actually uh, run our program um, in Java when we click on the green icon to run the program so what happens is this program that we wrote is going to get transferred here into the program section so we're going to write main here with all the different lines of code that we wrote and then what it's going to do is it's going to allocate space for the resources that we have here for the data that we have here so we have two pieces of data here we have an integer a equals two and float b equals three the memory of a computer you can think of like the movie theater example that we talked about before so we have a bunch of spaces in memory uh, and they are all have numbers associated with them so you can think of it like a, a square box for example with a bunch of different spaces and um, they're all numbered so for example this would be space zero this will be space one two three four and it'll go all the way up to however much memory that you have so the more ram you have eight gigabytes 16 gigabytes the more space you're going to have to allocate and <clears throat> these spaces in programming they call them bytes Let's think of it this way in a simplified manner so what's going to happen is each of these uh, different variables that we introduce need some space in, in the memory to to reside in and each one of them have a different size so for example int and this is just an example it takes two bytes and a float uh, since it's a decimal number and it's bigger let's say it takes four bytes as an example in each programming language each of these different uh, data types take different amount of spaces based on how they are designed but that part is not too relevant uh, understanding the what's behind it is more important so we have two pieces of data so what the computer does is at this point it comes here in the stack and then it allocates it needs six bytes for this function so it says two plus four is six so it says it takes a bunch of the memory space let's case six bytes and it allocates it to the main function so it cuts it off and then it puts the two variables there so it's going to put a here and b here and this is going to be associated to the main function so when we run our program when it's compiling what's happening is the, com the program is coming inside the program section of memory and then what it's doing is it's cutting up it's taking the some space in the stack and it's allocating it to the main function and it's giving it two space four six bytes of space one for a equals two and one for b equals three so the main function only knows about a and b because it all it has those two in the memory allocation for for on, in the stack we call this uh, a stack frame right here I'll, I'll write it on the top here this is called the stack frame so what happens again program comes here it calculates before even running your program it calculates how much space it needs for the main function so it says 2 plus 4 equals 6 and then it takes six spots just like you would do in the movie theater you would reserve six seats and it allocates two of them to a equals two and it allocates four bytes to b equals three and main function will only know about this this part here it won't know about any anything about the other seats or any other parts of the memory so it just knows about these two and then the cpu takes these two and it runs your application and that's pretty much it in the next video i'm going to talk more about how the memory works when we have multiple functions and we're also going to talk about um, how arrays work and we're going to explore what how we use the heap as well thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one